That was a great introduction. I'm not even doing that stuff anymore. Um, <laughs> some of it. Um, I, I was buying land for open space and doing conservation easements. I think the easement, that question came up earlier about easements. I think these solar panels and easements would fit together very well so that people would feel that the land was protected even beyond the 25 years, that it would either be renewed into solar or turned into prairie or turned over to the park district or some kind of a situation where people feel more comfortable if they live nearby. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity for other things to happen. So what I am, my specialty, I'm not the biologist, I'm not the ecologist, I'm the salesman. And I have an MBA in marketing and I came to work for a conservation group and just realized we stink at, at selling the concepts. We would go around saying we do good things and that doesn't cut it. So um, uh, Jack had a great uh, slide about, you know, if we did along the creeks and rivers, this, we would be able to protect this much. And if we did parks and forest preserves, we'd protect this much. If we did homeowners associations and all the land. And so I realized that we're not gonna make conservation an everyday term unless everybody is involved. And everybody has a home, everybody has a place of business. And so how do we engage those people? And so my part of it is working for a an, uh, land trust. We have um, no vested interest in it. So I don't work for a group that's doing the restoration. I don't work for um, somebody who has anything to do with making any money from the solar company. So when we come out and talk to groups, um, whether it be a park district group or whoever it is, we come from a clean position of, we're just telling you environmentally, this is a better way to go. So sometimes the message coming from a conservation group is accepted more by the public. And you've heard a lot of the scientists today and, and people talking about how this is a great concept. We've understood today how it has deep roots and it does pollinator values and there's a lot of good things about it. But if we can't sell it, if we can't make people believe it, if we can't people want it, then it's not gonna fly. So, there's a lot of reasons why we want to have not-for-profits and there's, uh, we belong to a, a organization called LTA, the Land Trust Alliance. And it doesn't matter if you lived in Florida or California or wherever, there are small land trusts like ours that are spread across the country. In McHenry County, there's a separate organization, Lake County, Cook County. We work in Kane, DuPage, Kendall, Will, Grundy, LaSalle, and so, these small land trusts are able to provide these functions for groups. And what we're selling are the benefits of nature. And we have to kind of understand a little bit that every single person, it's not like you're looking at a nature guy or Jack was a nature guy. We all have this inside of us, we, we want it. Where do we go on vacation? We go to Hawaii, we go to Wisconsin, the best stories we have of places we've engaged in natural communities. So bringing this to our home area and along roads and places that we visit is, is a natural thing. It may take some convincing, and I think that's what we have to work on a little bit is how do we talk to people about conservation measures. So I think one of the ways we're visual animals, this was a site in Naperville where we converted the left to the right. And when I show the before and afters for these sites, there's very little question that one is looking better, one can provide function, one is um, absorbing water and feeding butterflies and all these good things that are happening. But there's still that concern of is what's it gonna look like? And there's a way to put um, features into these um, landscapes that will help the general public. And I don't think we think of selling birds and butterflies. We think of, a lot of people think sales is a bad thing. And, you know, if you're a salesman, but it's what you're selling and everybody is in sales at one place or another. We're trying to convince or be persuasive in our actions and I have a lot to sell in the way of, of better environmental conditions. So this is what I, my portion of this is, and I'll show you some pictures of what we've done. We use things like the Monarch 
as our poster child. They touched a little bit earlier about it can bring salamanders or snakes or fox or different um, creatures to the landscape. We, we, in this group, we understand biodiversity and the need for all of that. The general public still, if I told them it brings snakes, <laughs> not gonna happen. Even bees are a touchy subject. Some people like bees, but we build these butterfly gardens. Pollinators is, is a softer way of saying bees. <laughs> you know, pollinators is such a nice word. Um, but I think it's 90% of the pollination is done with bees. But we put this beautiful monarch up here as the poster child, and we're trying to save these poor monarchs, and everybody loves the story. So this is what we're doing. I think even in the name of what we're talking about, I heard a lot of talk about prairies. And I've just found in my expertise or my experiences that even prairie may, is a bad connotation. So when I would, I, for a while I was going out saying, I can take the scary out of your prairie. But I hear people saying, what about the lions and tigers and bears, oh my. You know, that it, it you know, there's still people talk about stuff jumping out of me at the prairie or that big stuff flops over and I can't see the pond anymore. And so um, I've abandoned doing prairies on these sites that require short plantings. So my new thing that I'm out promoting is a meadow. So I extensively ask people, tell me about a meadow. And I put the microphone in their mouth, right in their face. And the number one answer was Julie Andrews in The Sound of Music. Oddly enough, the second answer was when they think of meadow, when Dorothy comes out of the nasty forest and she can see the Emerald City. Those are poppies. But the idea is a fairly flat, low profile, four flower filled surface. And if we can have people think of that, so this meadow even comes off your mouth, it's a nicer word. So this is what I'm trying to sell, is this concept of a pollinator meadow. And we can change the seed, we can adapt it to fit these sites. First, we have to have general acceptance. And so I went around trying to sell the concept. And my feeling is when I can sell it to the toll road, then you got something. So the front slope, I'm not even interested. It's salt filled. It's going to be have broken car parts. <laughs> but the back slope, they're converting to meadow. And it's 50%, 60% less costly. So you can see, if we can apply this to tollways, we can apply it to corporate sites, we can apply it to solar farms, we can apply these everywhere. We have the ex expertise with the piezos, the applied ecologicals, the end caps, the tall grass, and all of the companies that can do the work. Now we need to create more demand. And so I go around asking people, you know, the, the number one surface covering 39 of the lower 48 states is turf. In Illinois, there's more turf than corn and soybean combined. So if I'm looking at what do we want to do to make things more environmentally friendly across our neighborhoods, it would be reduce the turf. And people won't do it with, I mean, they've had opportunities to leave the prairie there and it's gone. So we need a new thought uh, pattern and I'm pitching the concept of the meadow. So I go out to people, this is right in Geneva along the Fox River and left or right, which one's prettier? Which one's feeding birds and butterflies? Which one is blooming in the middle of a drought? So these visualizations of those, all those comprehensive technical things that's happening, the soil is cooler, it's increasing the carbon uh, imprint on the soil, all that good stuff, you have to bring it to people in visualizations. And I think we haven't done it enough. We don't have, I mean, Jack talked about taking the pictures of the solar panels off the internet because we don't have enough before and afters of solar projects. So we need to build that. We need to find the right seed mixes that work 
and it's going to be a trial and error, and we're going to work at it. We're going to get it right. But having places and having things where we can introduce these concepts to people and invite them to experience these areas and not be afraid of them is one of the things that I'm working on all the time. And you sell the benefits of what you're getting from it. So everybody, there's a certain amount of conversation when, you, when you're talking to somebody and you're trying to be persuasive, what's in anybody, all of our minds is, what's in it for me? What, what is this gonna, how is this gonna make my life better? So some of the things that we can easily show them, you know, if you lived next to a pond and you, you wouldn't have the geese there anymore, or if it was gonna be less costly for your homeowners association, or you could keep the erosion down. So some of these projects, we walk them through what's going on. You know, there's gonna be some prep time going on. There's gonna be some equipment. We're gonna to have to live through that those steps of the process, show people that it's not gonna happen overnight, but that we will get to the point where it's gonna be pretty and do these functions. So people don't understand about the deep roots and that a plant is not a plant. You know, that the adaptations, the evolutionary process of plants is every bit as great as at the animal world. So when I'm out talking to people, I teach at college level, and we talk about evolution, the first thing they talk about is, yeah, these turtles have developed a shell that they can carry around for protection, or this giraffe has this goofy looking neck that can eat the acacia leaf. They understand the evolution of animals, but bringing that to a plant and educating them that these plants have evolved with these root systems that do all of the stuff that, that they survive in Illinois. We have cold, sleet, hail, all this stuff, they've survived for years and years. And, and plants like the silphiums, we t I talked to, heard about that. I mean, the compass plant will track the sun it's movement, it could turn itself. So some really cool things that we can sell as concepts and kind of bring that aha moment to people to say like, you know, I never really thought about that, that plants are essential for all life on this planet. So again, we have to then take those benefits and put them in pretty pictures um, I started the Conservation at Home program, which now we have eight different organizations running it across Illinois and parts of Michigan. The idea is to sell these concepts, go to their properties, help them with it, and get buy-in so that then we can call upon these contractors to implement the programs. The ditch. We're not calling them a ditch anymore. We're going to make them a bioswale. And this dead ditch that held water is going to be planted with native plants that are going to, the water won't sit there anymore and we won't have to worry about the Zika virus and the mosquitoes that are breeding in this water puddle. And we're going to turn it into this bioswale, which is a functioning living swale that's going to absorb that water. And, and maybe we do need to plant this in some of the cases, this was a park site and they wanted it, they want this thing to boom. They didn't have time for um, crawl, sleep, leap. So we planted it with an annual um, cosmos and it bloomed right away. And then that was the difference of getting it off the ground or not. So the maintenance has to be Upkept. I like the, the fact that I heard over and over today that maintenance is an in, uh, increasingly, um, I guess, under under managed sites we've seen, and they've many of them have failed. So there's been problems with it. They haven't done dedicated funding so that these areas become maintained on a regular basis, and working with the companies that are out there doing it so that these quality sites continue to look nice. When we have these, I can't do anything better than showing pictures of successful sites. And we've implemented these um, meadows on many different sites and had 
great success with some of them. Some of them we're still learning on how we're going to do this better with different types of soils. But when we've done, this was behind a bank in Elmhurst, and successful conversions, the people are very happy with it. It used to hold water about three months out of the year, and the water is now gone. At the farm, we've worked both with, we have a site that um, Piso has restored our wetland, and Applied Ecological has done our meadow out by the road. Our swath is 25 feet wide, and it runs 1,400 lineal feet along a regional bike trail. So a lot of people are going to be exposed to this native area, and we have interpretive signage along the trail so that people can see it and kind of understand that we're sequestering carbon here and that we're feeding the monarch and we're doing all these good things that they may not notice, you know, the typical question or typical comment I might get, oh, the flowers are pretty. But bringing that education that it's a lot more than just pretty flowers going on here. There's, there's an ecosystem function. And then people want to be recognized. So if you're going to do the work, you're going to convert it, you're going to change and make things better for the environment. Let's take pictures of it. Let's get it in the paper. Let's say this company is doing the right thing and get other people to jump on board. So if it means bringing a plastic sign, uh, recognizing somebody for doing something good, that's been an incentive. I had one guy that came to me and he, he said, my wife wants one of those for our prairie area. And I said, well, it's, you can't just say I want one. And he says, oh, yes, I can. I have a checkbook. <laughs> and he says, what would I have to do to make this acceptable so that I could get your certification? And I said, OK, that's the right answer. <laughs> and in, in a way, he was right. A checkbook will you know, would take care of some issues. He could have had maintenance or, and whatever. He got his sign, and his wife was happy. And what they say, happy wife, happy life. Um, but you get people smiling, you get good publicity. Sometimes there's somebody in the organization that is not so much on board. When they get their picture in the paper, there is some buy-in. So my portion here today is to offer to help you sell your projects and to, um, when I'm out talking to park districts, for example, the park district's number one reason they don't convert more areas to native is because they think people will hate it. People will scream. I was in the village of Glen Ellen, and they had bought a house and knocked it down. It had flooded repeatedly, and they bought the house, knocked it down, and they were saying, we're, we're thinking of putting sod there. And I was like, come on. It's a flood zone. And they said, well, people are going to scream. And I said, well, let's have a meeting. And I'll stand up there and let them scream at me. Well, for whatever reason, the not-for-profits, I represent Bambi and all that is good in the world. <laughs> so when I say this is better for the environment, it's going to absorb water, it's going to do all these good things, they go, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Where if the city had said that, we're going to turn this into a prairie, they're going to go, you're just too lazy to, you don't want to mow it. So. I explained to the people there that, do you really want the city to put grass in there? Do you think the city is going to keep the dandelions down? And do you think the city is going to maintain this like a golf course? Probably not. Uh, and we don't want to you know, bring mowers and all these other things. So that's what I can bring to the, the way I highly suggest anybody doing projects that you engage your local land trust and get the buy-in and get people talking about the right things. And I will take any questions you might have about what I'm trying to do. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. I have materials on the table here if you want. My um, card and business information is on the information there, too. I just wanted to start out and ask you this. Um, you mentioned using signage when you uh, do conservation at home. Would you recommend to all of the solar developers that when they plant their meadows under their solar farms, should they have some signage to help the public understand and get more buy-in? Certainly, 
can, Good idea. We've certified um, hundreds of, we have conservation at home for residential sites and conservation at work for sites that don't have people living on them. So we try to reach everybody with that type of thing and get publicity and for that. I'll elaborate on that as well. The uh, Land Conservancy of McHenry County has uh, uh, adopted the Conservation at Home and Conservation at Work program here in McHenry County. And so individual homeowners can contact the Land Conservancy and uh, get uh, some guidance on how to uh, integrate native plants into your home landscaping. Uh, the county building, uh, I help oversee the uh, native landscaping at the county building. Uh, the county is now a conservation at work uh, uh, garden. Um, so, you know, we have this here in McHenry County as well. Who are you pointing at? Jim, is that the DuPage Unitarian Universalist Church? Yes. Okay, I just saw that last week. Mary Alice and has her yard certified and done some work in her homeowners association. Um, so a lot of people that had seen and had benefit from the publicity we can get. I'm not planting the plants. Thank you for doing that. And June. Another church that has that certification, Conservation at Work, is the Unitarian Universalist Church of Elgin. Thanks to Jim. Hey, um, I was just wondering, uh, for you know the advertising purposes, do you ever use agricultural value um, as a selling point, like you know the boom to the farmers? Um, most of the farmers, I haven't been able to sell the concept of conversion to them because they're going from um, a productive, money-making thing. That's why the one of the ideas about the solar is in exciting because the farmer that would get revenue and he's not corn and soybeans. So um, I don't, I don't, the benefits are solid and I have had no luck with my farmer friend selling him to convert his waterways into native landscaping. That has not sold well with them. I had a question on the entomology over here. Um, so for wetlands, do you have any uh, new words that we should be using? Because wetlands, people immediately think mosquitoes, and I can tell them all they want that the dry down period is improved with most native wetlands versus traditional or, or turf. Um, In the yards, we're calling them rain gardens. Okay. Um, so those wet spots. And I do a lot of pictures of um, I went to a homeowner association and the bottom of the basin was just mud. So when you walk out there and you see this mud hole and show them how that could be converted to a wetland with lobelia and these beautiful flowering plants, and we use heavier percentage of forbs in these areas where there's going to be people sitting on benches and things like that, so you pretty it up. Typically people would think if, if I said, tell me about a wetland, they'll say, uh, there's cattails and water. So I don't think people have a good connotation of a wetland. There's a gorgeous wetlands if people would get out there and see them at certain times. But um, I don't think if you, if you ask, would you want your house next to the wetland, a lot of people would say that. So we have some work to do to educate people about how wetlands can be beautiful and the function that they do and all of that. I think we have to sell those concepts better. Thank you. A great opportunity for integrating native plants on pretty much any property. Uh, a lot of park districts are doing this now, and Crystal Lake Park just has done a great job on this, is uh, anywhere you have those wet spots in a open field, uh, you know, that's a, a hazardous area for uh, maintenance purposes. It looks horrible. Uh, the vehicles, you know, their lawnmowers get a lot of wear and tear going through those areas. If the only benefit you're deriving is the open view shed, there's no reason not to convert that to native plants. Uh, but these little depressional pockets on, uh, in uh, parks or on municipal, municipal, pro uh, municipal properties can easily be converted to uh, wetlands. Uh, so in Crystal Lake, um, right by Main Street Beach, they put a pollinator garden in, uh, uh, I guess, this past summer. And uh, it's performing wonderfully. 
So an area of liability, both from aesthetics and from all practical purposes, is now really a, uh, a thriving habitat community. I saw more monarchs there uh, than any other place in Crystal Lake. And so it, it reduces their cost, it reduces the wear and tear on their vehicles, and provides an aesthetic feature that previously had not been there. So, uh, and it really costs them very little to implement. So these things can be done uh, pretty much anywhere. <clears throat> Um, I, I have the conservation at home and at my home uh, for Front Yard Prairie in Algonquin. And I live in a cul-de-sac and uh, I've been there for a dozen years. No, no one has caught on. Um, so with everybody else's turf grass. But my question is, um, what would be, I mean, I'm, I kind of feel like this could be done at the grassroots level, the local level, at the village level, where there's a certain percentage of uh, homeowner's property, just a certain percentage that would need to be planted with pollinators. How else are we really gonna get this to be a patchwork? Like we have Hackatack National Wildlife Refuge, which is a fabulous patchwork. Um, we could be doing that, you know, increasing that acreage so much more if there was some sort of ordinance that part of that Part of your turf has to come out, and you, you've got to, you know, we, we, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, well, maybe that wouldn't. We've done the same thing. It's good, good tie-in. We have a, a program we call Partnering with the Parks. So we go to the park districts and, and identify pieces of their parks that either there's a creek running through it, or it's a low area, or these, they're not meant for ball fields. They never will be ball fields. So why not convert those? And the same thing at the municipal level, we have um, conservation in our community. So we have um, Naperville and Downers Grove and some of these communities are very engaged in conservation measures and we do programs for the community members there. In Downers Grove, you can get a rain barrel at a discounted price and you actually can do a bioswale in the ditch in front of your home, which is uh, right away. So if the communities buy in, then we can reach their landowners. I can't, now in this day, of there's no newspapers anymore to speak of, how do you communicate? Well, we give materials to the municipality and then they distribute them. And the same thing with the park district. So I agree that community buy-in is a big thing. So all we can do is go to the city council and say, is conservation a big thing in your community or not? And if they say, we want you to come, then we can spend more time there. <clears throat>